The first ingredient is matcha green tea powder. You can find this at specialty tea shops that sell bubble tea or Asian supermarkets, and I'm pretty sure you can also find them online. You want to choose the one that comes fully in powder form and that can mix in cold water. You also need some hot water. And of course, since we're making latte, you also need milk. I've tried it with skim and 2% and they both work just fine. I haven't tried it with full fat, I'm pretty sure that works fine. And soy milk also works as well. The main tool you'll need is milk frother. So this one is made of glass. It holds two cups of hot or cold fluid. It has a whisk, sort of flattened whisk, that can be pushed up and down. And it has mesh at the bottom that aerates the milk. And they're pretty affordable. They're about $10 each. We need a microwavable measuring cup to heat the milk in and of course you need a cup to hold your latte in and also a spoon to stir the green tea powder. So the first thing you want to do is measure out the milk. We need about two thirds a cup. You want to microwave it until it's 65 degrees throughout. So in my microwave it took about one minute at 1200 watts. So normally when I'm making it for myself, I don't go through the whole process of taking out a thermometer. So I just touch the side and if it feels that it's hot but I can still sip a little bit of it without burning myself, then it should be good to use. In the meantime, it's a good idea to prepare the green tea concentrate. So pour two tablespoons of hot water into the cup and add a teaspoon of green tea powder. Now the green tea powder tends to make lumps, so make sure you stir really well and run the spoon along the bottom edge of the cup just to make sure all the green tea powder has dissolved. When you've finished mixing the green tea, you'll notice that the mixture is more viscous than regular green tea. So that's expected and we can set that aside and work on the milk. So our milk is hot and ready to use. Before I pour it into the milk frother, I like to give it a quick stir because microwave heating is sometimes uneven. And you can pour the whole thing in in one go, and then we can start frothing. To froth the milk, you want to pull the plunger up and down repeatedly. You'll feel that the milk thickens and expands in volume, and you're looking to reach about one and a half times the original volume. Now I've read that usually for lattes, you want to only reach one and a quarter times, but doing it by hand like this, I find that one and a half times works better. So with a plunger, you don't want to go all the way up and all the way down. You really want to keep the flat mesh part of it submerged in the milk the whole time. If you make large sweeping plunges, it'll just make the air bubbles really big and it'll put too much air in it. It won't pour properly and it'll just give you a lot of gas. So sort of short and quick movements like this. When your milk has reached one and a half times the original volume, you can take the plunger out and the mesh will skim off any large bubbles at the top. Give the milk a tap and a swirl to get rid of any other bubbles. And then it's a good idea to give your green tea concentrate a stir just to make sure nothing has settled. Before you pour, you want to give both cups a bit of a swirl just so the liquids are moving. So with a cup of green tea tilted a little bit, pour the milk in one go until you reach about three quarters the way up the cup and then slow down at this point. The foam will come out and you can do your design. Pour slowly, so we'll back and forth a little bit and then draw through at the end just before it overflows and hopefully you get something resembling a heart. Now, especially in the summertime, you don't really want a hot latte. Sometimes you want a cold latte, and instead of adding ice to it, you can just use cold milk. Almost everything is the same, except you don't microwave your milk. So I'm using a nice glass mug this time. It's important to choose one that also holds hot water because you always want to dissolve your green tea powder in hot water. If you use cold water, it tends to be a little bit grainy. For a cold green tea latte, especially if you're trying to make a design, you want your green tea concentrate to be a little bit thinner, so I either add a little bit more water or a little bit less green tea powder. And the same thing, stir to dissolve and make sure there are no lumps or big bubbles. And then we can pour the milk directly into our milk frother this time, again about two-thirds a cup. And then we can frost just as we did with the hot milk, so keeping the whisk part of it submerged under the milk the whole time, just so we don't have really big bubbles. You'll feel that the milk is a bit thicker and it's a little bit more difficult to froth because the proteins get a bit looser in the milk when it's hot compared to when it's cold. 
So again, when you froth it to about one and a half times the volume, give it a tap and swirl, and you'll find that cold milk tends to trap big bubbles a little bit easier. You might have to poke it with a spoon before you pour, and then give it a swirl, give both mixtures a swirl. Again, tilt your cup and then pour right in the center, and then near the top, let the foam come out. You can swirl back and forth a little bit and then draw the line through to make a heart. Now this heart is very amateur. It's a bit harder to make the design with cold latte. And there are a few big bubbles, but nevertheless, it's cold matcha green tea latte without the ice. And you get the creamy texture of the milk foam. And it's, it's, an, it's sort of a nice heart. To be honest, when I'm doing it for myself, I just dump the green tea powder with my milk into my frother and then just froth the whole thing in there. And I drink it straight from the frother. I don't even pour it into a cup. But for someone special or for a special occasion, it's nice to practice your latte designs. And I don't know, it, it looks more special if you're making it for someone. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have questions and I'll either direct you to a website where some expert can answer the question or I'll try to answer the question as well. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.